Well, let's discuss this further with Ed Hussein from the American think tank, the Council on Foreign Relations. Do you think there is any chance of further truce talks being successful? Kasha, in the short term, yes, because the conflict has to end. And we've seen previous precedents where Israel's gone to war with Gaza, Hamas inside Gaza has triggered the conflict with Israel. And after three weeks, four weeks, matters come to a head and there is a short-term cessation of violence. But in the medium to long term, they will return again and again to this conflict situation until and unless the Israelis realize they cannot contain and hold two million people in what is essentially an open-air prison in Gaza. And the Hamas organization realizes that you cannot continue to try and secure long-term peace a piece by rocketing innocent civilians inside Israel. So both sides are to blame here. And unless both sides come to recognition that the current mindset is one that leads them to mutual destruction, there won't be a long-term end to this awful violence. Well, in terms of Hamas, you're talking about a complete rethink of what Hamas is all about. Absolutely. I think we make the mistake too often in the West of seeing Hamas simply as a terrorist organization. Absolutely, it has a terrorist outfit, but Hamas is much larger than just being a terrorist organization. I've had the good or bad fortune of meeting Hamas people in various countries, and they r run a whole gamut of operations, whether it's finance, whether it's hospitals, medical facilities, uh, orphanages, care for uh, their widows of their fighters. And and Israel is at the helm, I think, of pushing this image of Hamas being only a terrorist organization. Now, here in the UK, one of the benefits, I think, that the, the Irish peace process has offered globally is that, yes, Sinn Féin had a terrorist uh, flank, which was uh, the, the IRA, but there was also the political arm with which the British government, the American government and the Irish government cut a deal. And a similar outlook needs to be embraced by the Israelis, that you cannot kill yourself into long-term survival and security, that Hamas has to be embraced as part of the solution and not constantly part of the problem. But how can they be embraced as part of the solution if today, again, we saw it was Hamas that fired the rockets first? Because I think too often we're putting the cart before the horse. The Israeli uh, prelude to talks is too often that Hamas must abandon violence and give up its arms. Well, one of the things we saw here in the UK was Often you have to turn a blind eye to the armed men and talk with the politicians, empower them, and reach a stage where the politicians can then force the armed brigands to hand over their weapons because there's no incentive to fight anymore. And unless that incentive is taken away from Hamas, and unless we continue to uh, ignore the political wing of Hamas based on Qatar and increasingly with a strong presence in Turkey, then what happens is the armed wing of Hamas have the strength that they continue to have because they're the guys who are fighting and they're the guys who have the strength to say that the vast majority of the population is with us in Gaza to fight the, the so-called resistance. So the entire the, 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 the terms, the psychology of approaching this conflict needs to change. Indeed. Okay. For the time being, Ed Hussein from the Council on Foreign Relations, thank you very much for your expertise. Thank you.